Greetings, everybody. It's at last playing Oculus from Wireless Insider, and today I have with me the brand new Asus Google Nexus 7 tablet. I had a chance to use this guy for about a week now, and uh, I have to say I'm absolutely in love with it. But you know what? Let's keep this video short. I want to get down to the core things, things you'll be using this tablet for, practical things. I'm going to go through email, images, PDF files, your calendar, Google Drive, browser, YouTube, as well as the software very quickly and how it works. Uh, I don't know why people are complaining that this tablet was really hard to unpackage or unbox. I mean, I had no issues. A video should pop up right now actually of me opening it. Only reason I have the box here with me now is to show you what comes inside the packaging. So normally the tablet would be on top of this, okay? Uh, you'd have this box here, and inside the box you'll have your you know, standard books. You have your <laughs> data cable and the cable that plugs into the charging brick to charge it. So let's get this stuff out of here. And let's look at the tablet. Starting off, let's look at the hardware real quick. If you look at the front, you have a 1.3 megapixel camera. There is no LED on this device, so there's no status LED, sorry, LED or indicator or anything of that nature. Uh, camera's there. At the top right corner, you have the power button and standby button, volume up and volume down. At the bottom, you have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as micro USB charger. Nothing on the left and nothing on the top. If you take a look back here, you'll also notice that there is a microphone there and a microphone right there, so you can pick up audio better for video capture or for uh, chat. Uh, in terms of thickness and everything, I have an iPhone 4S and a 9900 bold right here. Uh, if you have a bold, it's pretty much the same thickness. It's very flush. You know, my hand's right on top of both displays. It's not flying away. On the iPhone, it's a little bit thicker than the iPhone, but you can imagine that still means it's fairly thin. There is the transformer, there is the iPhone, cool. And since we're talking about tablets, yeah, here, here is the playbook. And it is pretty much the same thickness as the playbook, except since it does have a curved design here, very nice and beveled, it does seem smaller. Display size is the same for both tablets, but because of the way it's designed, it does look nicer in my opinion. So let me get the playbook out of here. Let's see how long it takes this guy to turn on. I've got my bold right here. Oh, let me unlock that. Cool. All right, so power buttons here for the vibrate or something. There we go. Ah, there's a one second delay for me, so let me just add a second to this timer. So yeah, it's a wonderful device when I had it. It was very fast. By no means are we going to compare this to uh, e-readers or anything of that nature, because this will blow them out of the water. It is fair to compare this more to the iPad 3 and other new generation devices like the Asus Transformer Prime or the newer ones coming out. Don't be comparing this to the Playbook, which is a year old or anything like that. What Asus and uh, Google have done here, uh, well, that was fast. <laughs> Let's put this password in. Loading plus two plus three plus four. Okay, so let's add four seconds to this time, so 25 seconds. Let's make that 29 seconds for it to turn on fully so you can use it, and it's pretty much good to go. And, um, yeah, what I was saying is because they released this tablet at such a low price point, $230, uh, anybody can afford this. I mean, this thing has a quad-core processor at 1.3 gigahertz, a Tegra 3 processor, one gigabyte of RAM, and selection of 8 or 16 gigabytes of internal storage. There is no removable memory, and there's no LED status indicator light to show you it's charging or if you have a notification. That's good to keep in mind. So now that we're in here, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Uh, first of all, navigation. It's very smooth. It has to be. It's a quad-core <laughs> people over here. Um, if you look real close... It does have an animated wallpaper, and when I move from screen to screen, it's smooth. Going in and out of the menu is smooth as well. Widgets are located in the menu as well. So if you want to add something, you know, like a clock, click, drag, and you can add it to a home screen that doesn't have it. If you want something that can be rescheduled, so click here, oh, sorry, or resized. Now you can resize certain widgets. So in this case, my calendar, I can change the size. This is a feature of Jelly Bean, so I won't stick on it for too long. Let's go with the assumption that this is extremely fast. Now, let's load it with stuff. First off, let's do a practical example. Let's go into email. Clicking here, let's go into my mail. That is the interface. It's very cool. It has your folders on the side, and your email can be navigated here. Uh, I did send myself some emails here, so let's take a look. Some wallpapers. Swiping left to right takes you between your emails. Very fast. There's a Wi-Fi connection. There is no 3 or 4G version of this, just Wi-Fi. And... Um, since this is a good uh, segue, since in this email I did send myself a picture, if you take a look at it, it's 6,000 by 4,000 pixels, it's a, over 2.5 megs in size. I want to show you how smooth this device is. So, let's hit save. Image is done. Let's view it. And this is a massive picture, in this case of an Aston Martin. It still rotates very quickly. Pinch to zoom is very fast. Look at that quality. There is no lag. This is an enormous picture, over 10 megapixels in size, 
practically uncompressed. And if it can load something this smooth, you can only imagine <laughs> the potential. You'll never have any slowdown in any of your images. Like this is as big as it gets, people. I don't see why you should have 4,000 by 3,000 pixel image. Down here, you'll notice this, the navigation buttons have faded into little dots. So we can go back home and these will rotate with the display if you're in a certain setting. So if you go to here, it'll rotate. And another nifty feature here real quick is if you go to up here to the uh, status bar at the top, you can lock the rotation or unlock it. So you can do that straight from here or go straight to your settings. So everything is accessible and very easy to get to. And let's go to images in the image gallery since we're right there. And in this case, I only have downloads. And uh, these are quite a, quite large in size. They're about eight megapixels, even around two or 3,000 pixels. And they still move very smoothly when going screen to screen. It's an absolutely amazing. Going to the interior, this is of the R8. It's very smooth. I mean, the Aston Martin here is the largest image I've ever put on the device. And you can, you can tell by the quality of the image how large it is in size. It does not lag. So, all right, there we go. It owns in, uh, <laughs> in the gallery, which is great. Let's go to PDFs now. Uh, I have a system map of the TTC here, which is the uh, local you know, transportation system here in Toronto. And I want to see how it uh, loads. So let's go to downloads. And then... Uh, PDF map. So this is a PDF, but one meg in size, and you can see it's rendering. Trying to do this on an older generation tablet would just explode. Right now we're at five seconds, it's still rendering, and seven seconds, done. Let's rotate it again. You'll notice it does not re-render every time you rotate it. So it doesn't have to think again, it's already there. So let's pinch the zoom to the downtown core, rendered quickly again, and rendered. That is remarkably smooth for a PDF document. Uh, this isn't an image. This is PDF with layers and different sections. It's very quick, less than one second to render after zoom in and it takes about seven seconds to open up. Uh, and this is with a whole bunch of layers. So a practical uh, situation where you have a PDF presentation or slide deck, you know, it'll be just fine. So there's another example of how badass this guy really is. So let's go to the calendar now and show you how that looks. Really like it. I'm a huge fan. If you take a look here, all right, rotate. Rotates very nicely. In the top left corner, you can choose between month. You can do week, all right, what you have available through the week or what you have to do. And let's go to uh, day. It shows you. So let's go to Canada Day, whatever. <laughs> that was a little back, but you get the idea. It's very smooth and easy to navigate. You, will, you can choose between different um, uh, mailbox or sorry, calendar sources. So let's go back to month view. And let's say you want to click on. Here, let's go to Veld, and it shows you very easily where you want to go. This button down here shows you multitasking. I'm trying to load this up as much as possible for a reason. Uh, now, last but not least, it doesn't come loaded with it, but you could totally install it. It's uh, Google Drive, and I inserted a demo here, so beer. Click that. And basically, all I did was list my top 20 beers here, and then I just duplicated it several times so that um, it would populate the rest of the spreadsheets. Let me just cancel what I was doing there. So this is the idea of how smooth it is in Google Docs. If you can see that, yep. If you rotate, very smooth. And you can pinch the zoom, it's awesome. So yeah, Stella Artois beer, 10 out of 10. It's best in Europe. <laughs> so it's very smooth when you're navigating in that sense. And it updates extremely quickly. When I created this spreadsheet for an example, I named it tests or sample spreadsheet. When I renamed it on my computer in two seconds, literally it updated here to beer. So it's very fast, very responsive. So now that that's open, let's go ahead and see what I can do to slow this thing down. So we have a whole bunch of stuff open here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw on an animated wallpaper. This is a third party wallpaper from the marketplace, not meant to be on the device, but it's there for free. This is called Flames. Because it's a third-party wallpaper and I have a bunch of stuff running in the background, I want to see if we can slow this guy down. So you can see how smooth it is. Does not impact it one bit. I'm talking there is no noticeable lag, even going in and out of the menu. Let's do this. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is ultimate and badass. Very quick, going to the menu options, there is no lag. And that's with an animated wallpaper and a whole bunch of stuff running in the background. To kill stuff or end the tasks, you just swipe to the left and you end them. So now we've got this cool thing going in the background. Let's go ahead and hit the browser, see how quickly we can render some web pages. And uh, as I always do, let's go to, oh, this is my previous search, <laughs> wallpapers. Let's go to engadget.com like I always do. Hmm? Oh, sorry, I was missing it. Quick to rotate, it'll give you a chance to see the keyboard. Very nice, very large. I just had to get used to the fact that the go is up here and not down here. Usually enter or go is somewhere lower than where it is right here at, at uh, underneath the backspace. So I had to get used to that. So if I go to nga, no, I butcher that. Gadget.com, then go. 
It's very nice to use this device. Uh, the keyboard is very smooth, or sorry, the uh, transition um, when rotating is very smooth, but the keyboard was very easy to use. Uh, using it with one hand can be a little tricky because it is a little large, but I have found that, you know, holding this in your hand with a power button right here and the home button at the bottom, you could use this no problem if you have to read a book, Kindle Fire, or anything of that nature. So let's try navigating the website. Is it still loading? No, it's fully loaded. So there is the entire guy. Bit of a lag, but this is a very you know, loaded website. Let's go back here. Rotate. This is Google Chrome, by the way. So if you have a website or you have an internal portal in your company that uses a certain system and it has to be on either Firefox or Google Chrome or works better, it's perfect. This is a native browser built into uh, Jelly Bean. It's very smooth. Let's go over here, Galaxy S3. Yeah. And as you can imagine, yeah, little, no competition. They, it can't suffer in any way. So Google Chrome being loaded on, there's awesome Kobo readers there as well. So if you want to read your books, I have a few open here. You can, Art of War, fine. This is from my library. It doesn't come with any. You can read, rotate is very, that's smooth, about one second, less than one second. And you can navigate certain things and change your options in the corner. So yeah, you have your e-reader option here and at this price point, I don't see why not. It's fantastic. Okay, let's go to YouTube. And I really love YouTube on this device. It looks exactly like my desktop version. This is my personal profile and it'll have all my uh, recommended feeds or in this case, my subscriptions all on the main page. Fades very nicely, has everything there. Nothing's limiting, not in the mobile version or anything like that. If I rotate it, it rotates with me in a tile format, which is so cool. Let me show you the keyboard in this mode while we're at it. Search. Very nice and open. Uh, there are some areas where you can't reach when you're holding it with one hand, but totally usable. I love the size of this. Let me search for 300. I'll type it in, even though it's there. Remember, the entry button's a little higher than normal. And uh, this should be the movie trailer. So using my other reviews. Wow. Well, it's another one, but you get the idea. Very loud. Speaker is right down here. <laughs> pause, you can change a high quality version there and you can go back. So that, that's really loud. It's awesome. <laughs> YouTube uh, succeeds on this device really well. So basically, what can you take away from this review? Well, guys, this is absolutely one powerful tablet. Uh, I had it for a week. I'm going to keep it. This is one of the guys that will be stuck on my wall, be following me everywhere I can go. Not many accessories available for it just yet. I'm dying to see an Autobox case for it. Uh, that would be great. And I think they may be making one. Who knows? But the sheer speed of this device, even with a whole bunch of applications running in the background, the ability to load those images at that speed and that resolution is absolutely phenomenal. Um, this is what it should be, guys. At this size, at this price, it can't get any better. I can't think of anything in this price point or in this size that can possibly be better than what this device does, especially when it comes down to detail uh, and uh, image quality, display quality, and even viewing angles. I mean, I have absolutely no complaints. So, yeah, guys, again, this is Elias Plinakos from Wireless Insider. If you have any comments or questions, leave it in the section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you saw here today. Until next time, take care.